Hi, Joel. Hey, Andrew. How are you doing today? A little under the weather, but I'll kill. I'll man up. You're under the weather. Yeah. Well, you know the show must go on. The show must go on. What episode are we on today, Andrew? It's episode 23 of the Medellin Podcast. Some would call it the Michael Jordan episode, for those who get it. Or the LeBron James episode. Who else is number 23? I don't know. <laughs> LeBron and Michael episode. And, uh, who's this? What's your name, miss? I'm Gloria Villa. It's Gloria. Get the song. Get, hit her with a Gloria song. The French. The Parisian. Gloria Villa on the Medellin Podcast. Gloria 23, she's not 23. Clearly I'm not. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Taught him everything he knows. Welcome to the Medellin Podcast, episode 23, the Michael Jordan LeBron James episode. I'm Andrew Messia. I'm Joel Duncan. And today, we're going to be talking about some interesting things with an interesting woman, a Paisa woman, to be exact. Before we get to that, Joel, what are we drinking today? Uh, well, today I'm basically drinking a cube of ice. They call <laughs> me the Iceman Chuck Liddell. And um, I may or may not put some of this, uh, how do you say that? How do you even pronounce that? You're like an international woman. Glenn Livet? Glenn I, Glenn I don't Glenn know. I Glenn might Livet. be mistaken, really. That, that's well, no idea. And if you've watched any of these shows, you know that I'm not a whiskey fan, but Where the other from? boys are. From the Scotslands? I probably from think the land it's Scottish. Of the Scots. Yes. Scotch, co- Scotchland. It's yes. got a bunch of white people's names, like George and J.G. Smith. So, yeah, it's got to okay. be from over there. It's got to be from Scotland, then. Uh, so, and we also have on the table, uh, if you're looking at this, we have our proud sponsors of today. We'll get to this a little later. The Ihamiya Coffee, Daughter of Mine. Daughter of mine. Daughter, you of, have my me. daughter of mine. I Tell know. me, where have you been? Made in where? Made in, uh, made made in, in Colombia. Colombia. It says, it says made in Medellin and uh, uh, Colombia coffee. And they're 100% committed. We're 100% committed to this podcast. Let's kick this shit off. Uh, how about this woman introduce herself? Who are you? Where are you from? What's going on? Right. My name is Gloria Villa. Um, I was born here in Medellin. I'm currently living in Paris. I am a photographer. Okay. Uh, what else do you want to know? Oh, we're going to get to know We're going to get to a well. lot of that stuff. <laughs> you don't worry about yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah. So, a little backstory. We've known Gloria for a few years. Joel met her first. I'll let him explain. How long was uh, that? I think that was probably back in like 2012. 2012. It was the second year I went to Carnival. I okay. know as a fact because, right. uh, quick background, I was printing out these uh flyers for offering fee- free photography back then because i was on the real hustle with photography free flyers i think i printed out 100 or 200 of them uh to give out to uh real estate agents to say if you uh have a property to shoot i bet my photos will help you sell your property and i had them there i was signing off the paperwork and gloria came up and picked a few up and put it in her was about to put it in her bag or whatever she was doing and then the guy or the girl behind the counter was like no 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 those are his and she's like oh my god i'm so sorry and that's literally how we met we started going on and talking uh for a while and um yeah we'll talk about carnival later but basically at the end of towards the end of the conversation i mentioned to gloria that i was going to go to carnival and the first time was really shitty for me because i went as a tourist and i didn't have like nowhere anywhere to stand to watch a carnival and gloria's like oh my god my best friend Emil lives in, in Barranquilla. I lived in Barranquilla. You have to go. You have to stay with her. You have to whatever, whatever. I'm going to tell her to contact you. I'm going to give you her number. And I'm like, wow, that's very kind of you. I'm probably never ever going to call this person. And we'll get to that later. But that's that's how we met. Yeah, I yeah. remember yeah. that. Yeah, I guess a little bit of uh, information for those of you that are listening and don't know what Carnival is. Um, obviously, the biggest Carnival in the world is in Rio, in Brazil. Uh, also takes place in February. Uh, it's a Catholic holiday, but it's also a, a Colombian holiday, obviously, because it's a, ca- a Catholic nation. So Barranquilla does their own version of the Carnival, and it's the second biggest in the world. The third biggest being uh, New Orleans. Um, and, and Venice uh, as well. They're, at they Venice, have they have one now, too? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That, has that been Trinidad around? Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, Trinidad and Tobago, I know that, yeah. 
uh, I think many other places. The thing is, it's a pagan um, celebration. 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 Yeah. So the idea is before you go into these 40 days of, you know, praying and stuff, you get of, it all out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah you get it all out. You become, you, 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 yeah. you're sinful for Sin, like and then you a go whole on, week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah. yes, I I, it, I guess yeah. I would describe Carnival as sinful. a sinful week yeah, yeah, yeah. weekend. Sinful week. Yeah, uh, for yeah. us. It's pretty, um, pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah accurate. <laughs> so I guess um, when I first met you, my first impression was that this is not an, an ordinary person. I w- I was gonna say not an ordinary paisa, but you're not really an ordinary person. You're not the typical woman that someone meets. That's like, oh, you know, I I have a job. Um, I go to work nine to five. And um, and that's it. Or or and I have some aspirations, but um, you know maybe I'll go travel next year, or maybe I'll I'll hold them off because I really want to get my career in line. Um, it, a, upon first impression, when I first met you, I thought like this person is different. Um, and the way that I would describe Gloria would be, I guess, really bold. I I guess that would be the word that I would describe Gloria as bold. Um, and you and you'll understand why here in a moment as she tells us her story. But before we get to your your bold story, can you tell us a little bit about how where you grew up here in Medellin, your family? Right. Yes, I was born in Medellin. Um, I in a middle class family. Uh, my mother studied architecture in um, public university, and my father studied engineering. My father worked for Procter & Gamble for many years. And uh, when I was 12, we moved to Barranquilla because of that. Um, yeah, so I lived in Barranquilla for about 10 years and then I came back to study advertising at the university. Did you, did you pick up a Barranquilla accent in your 10 years from 12 to 22? No. No? Just no. few words. Just a few, few words. Few expressions, okay. but really not the accent. Okay, uh, but I do notice an accent in English. Where did you uh, study English? I've learned English in England, in Cambridge. In England. Well, how old yeah. were you when that happened? 18. 18. I so, went there with nothing. I went there with my name is and I'm hungry. And that was it. Wow. Like wow. I had no idea my of anything. My name is anything. and I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like, like you went to England to beg. To the <laughs> 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 my name is Gloria. <laughs> I am hungry. <laughs> nice yeah. to meet you. Right. Okay. Uh-huh. And it, this was the time before there was any, you know, smartphones yeah, yeah. or anything of that no sort. No Google Translate. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I was like literally opening up a, a map and showing it to the bus driver yeah. and saying, please here. And yeah. he would say yes or no. And Did you ever juggle? And- Did you ever juggle? And no. for the money. <laughs> no. Fli- eating fires, nothing. Yeah, you just... Not exactly. But that's monster. interesting, though, yeah. like, because that's not a normal thing for a paisa or even a Colombian or a South American or even an American to the, do is to go study abroad. The thing is, my father, as he uh, st- uh, worked for Procter & Gamble, at, ho- at some point in his career, he got stopped. Oh. of you know growing because he didn't speak english oh so he hit a ceiling S- yeah exactly because uh-huh. he didn't speak english and he said this is not gonna happen to my kids they're okay. gonna speak english no matter what okay and i was terrible terrible yeah. lousy uh you know in english super bad yeah uh so he put he put us me and my brother in every single english course he could but i'm terribly dyslexic and i cannot keep up with the normal structure so all my you know, uh, classmates were progressing and I was, and I was like, I'm done with this. This yeah. is shit. I cannot do it. It's terrible. But then he said, okay, you're going to go somewhere else and you ha- you're going to have to learn because be there's no other way. Yeah. And that's yeah. how I ended up there. And that's how, and how long I, did you spend uh, out there? Eight months. Eight months. Is that some sort of like an organized, I guess, an organized exchange or how yeah, did that work? Yeah, yeah. What, what, how did, yeah. how did he put you in that program or what you graduated found, from high school? We found, yeah, we found a company that, you know, did all the things. So I went there into a host family. Everything was taken care of. And would you say that changed your life? Completely. hundred percent. First of all, because uh, when you travel so young yeah. and you are out of your, you know, parents protections and house and stuff. You really open your boundaries and your eyes to the world. It makes you and force you to be more tolerant and to yeah. open to different cultures and stuff. And second, because I actually learned English yeah. and that opened my job opportunities 
Like you have no idea. Oh, like yeah. the English just changed my life, okay. and I have the life that I have now, and the job that I have now thanks to that. Okay. So I literally have everything to. Thank I think that's my, a great tip. A great tip for any paisa for. folks that are watching this. Right. Or my God. In, or if yeah. You have like, like a, a paisa girlfriend or anything, invest in the English. Yeah. Get, yeah. get English. Get it, them speaking it's English. Really, it's really. It really changes your life. Okay. Right. Right. Absolutely. And um, so. Before you went to England to learn English, yeah. that was when you were 18. Yeah. Before that, obviously, you went to high school. Yeah. Uh, you were going to university here. Yeah, yeah. very uh, regular, normal life. And you grew up during the 90s then here yeah. in, in, in Medellin. Yeah. Uh, what was that like? Because um, as many of our listeners probably know, the 90s were were plagued with mafia and the and, 80s because i was 80s. born i was born in the 83 i'm not ashamed okay. to say it 81 <laughs> right okay good uh so, 90 minus 10 right yeah. so yeah the the 80s and the 90s here were very difficult times very very difficult times we cannot deny mm. this was very dangerous and it was very difficult to live here in fact when my father has had this opportunity to go to to Barranquilla. It was 1995 and my mother didn't think about it once. Wow. She was like, let's right, get out of here. let's get out of here. I'm I'm fed up with this. Okay. So so you and then so 95 you went to Barranquilla. Yes. So in 2006 is when you came back here? Is that 11 years later how long did you spend out there? When was it? I, I came back from England in 2003, and then I think I started university in 2004 or something. But, okay, so, oh, 2004 here. Yeah, yeah something oh, like okay. that. And what did you study here? Advertising. Advertising? What university was that? Bolivariana. Oh, yeah, UPB? Yeah. Yeah. But wait a second. So I, you... play for their, no, uh, I play basketball for their alumni no team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wait, even and an Are alumni. you an alumni? Hell no. I didn't even graduate university. <laughs> well, alumni. Uh, so, so wait, wait, but there's something that's missing from this story. <laughs> yeah. So your family moved out to Barranquilla. Yeah. They still live in Barranquilla. Yeah, they do. You come here for university yeah. at 20 years old or however old you are. Yeah, something. Okay. 20 something. By yourself? Yep. You started living by yourself at 20? Yeah. You see, now that to me is something different for a Paisa girl or a Colombian girl, just about any girl. A South American any. person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like that's if you true, think about true. it, and even maybe many millennials from the United States yeah. that have to live with their parents, yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. they don't. I mean, I think in, in the world, someone that is twenty, yeah, going off and living on their own is not very common. And so, as a woman, true. even and, more challenging. Yeah, and as a, a yeah. female, yeah, exactly. So, when you got out of university, um, did you start working in advertisement right away? So I did my internship in one of the biggest um, advertising agencies here in. In Medellin, it was like the dream job that everyone wanted to get. Okay. And when I did, I didn't like it. Okay. I didn't like the life of an advertising agency, the whole ambience. It was just not for me. Um, plus, I told you, I'm dyslexic. I'm, I'm really are. Yeah. So I just couldn't keep up with the job. It okay. was just right. too detailed, you know, and I had to keep up with everything. I just couldn't. Okay. So, yeah. no, it, was, and it wasn't for me. So, I guess... I didn't know I was dyslexic at the time, though. You didn't? Oh, yeah. so you just thought there was like, I, it's I, too hard. It is too hard. It's too hard yeah, and yeah. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess maybe some people, I, many people actually write to me on my blog because I wrote a, a piece about doing business in Medellin. And they ask me about the opportunities in Medellin for marketing. Yeah. Do you think there, if I'm like an international marketing student or an international business student or just a marketing student and I want to come and experience Colombia but I want to get a job here do you think there's opportunity for them or it's a good idea I think this city is booming it's amazing all the opportunities oh, sorry all the opportunities that there are here but I don't think you should come and just look for a regular job and hope to make it there's yeah. so many things to do just be creative Okay. Because there are, you know, there are many, many, I don't know. I just come up with 
I in Airbnb experience, for example, every single day when I wake up, I'm like, oh, what about if we do, I don't know, uh, a tour in this and this and that, or what if I, we offer this? Like, there's so many things, so many things to but, offer. But there's something, but there's something about that though. You are entrepreneurial because we can talk. Um, we, we, we're going to get to your present, but you're definitely entrepreneurial because I've known you in other businesses, which we'll get to for <laughs> a second. But that way that you're thinking, like, oh, why don't we create an air, uh, a tour experience on Airbnb? I would say 99 percent, 99.9 percent of this world cannot do that. They they would not come up and think like that. They'd be like, oh my goodness, I gotta figure out how I can make some money, I gotta get a job. Versus, yeah. and, and a marketing student, and that's but, a funny- but, you, but that's that's leaving money on the table, rightly. It's like, little, but, but if you have- and just, and just citing yourself. I mean, I understand not everyone is an entrepreneur. I really respect that. And there's people that need, you know, to have the structure of a company and stuff. Yeah. What I would say for that is, maybe Colombia is not the best place to be yeah. an employee. Yeah, because you won't gain as much, you won't earn exactly, as much. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like there, there are other places, but definitely, for, for, oh my God, there's so many opportunities, so many things to do here, okay. really. And this, this you know, the projection of this city is amazing. Like yeah. all the things that are happening right now, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you have another question? No, no. It's just about business before we jump off. And right. I don't know if you want to talk about it or not, because I know you, you dissolved this business. Uh, years no, it's ago. fine. Well, it's well, well, tell, us, fine. tell us a bit about because um, and, and what it was like to run. We also met. So I exchanged contact with Gloria. There's a part that left out and a lot of people um, don't know, potentially even our friends of ours that are common now wouldn't even know this. But um, Gloria decided to start buying my photos to put on walls. Right. You had these stickers and you would decorate people's homes or Absolutely, whatever it was. Yeah. And then it was like, OK, I want to see your portfolio. Send me what you have. Uh, and I want to use them on the walls. Yeah, and while you own that, yeah. actually, I don't know. You can tell me now because I think back of, about it. Gloria was like, oh, my God, I love these photos of Medellin you took. And me and Gloria actually did like one of the first photo classes, which when we get to the present, you'll understand why this is so funny and ironic. And um, we took our cameras and I was teaching Gloria how to take do night photography yeah, from the top of the hotel yeah, trip. Yeah, do you remember yeah, that? At the studio, we were, exactly, of course. Exactly. One of like, the most unforgettable nights of my life. Yeah, yeah you're like, wow, it was that's amazing. That's amazing. And, um, and I told you, I, I, I remember from that night when I was so excited taking photos, you told me, oh my God, we just lost one more. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. Like, oh you're, done. you're done. Yeah, you're, you're done. done. If you're so it's, obsessed yeah, with this yeah. camera. <laughs> um, and we'll get to that. But anyway, so you bought my photos at the time. Um, and what, what was the business that you had? What, what, so, what did you do? What happened is I finished, uh, you know, working in this agency and I knew that I wasn't, I, I wasn't going to do advertising. So I started, um, I created a business with a friend of mine from the university called Umami Wall Stickers. Mm -hmm. And we were doing uh, basically uh, wall stickers, uh, murals, but with printing, you know, using the advertising technique of, you know, of big printing, printing yeah. but for decorations and we were printing fabrics to do cushions and lamps and all yeah. sorts of beautiful things. We worked a lot on that for like, yeah. I think it was five years or something. Yeah. But I think we had a, a, a lack of experience in terms of businesses and you know marketing and stuff yeah. even though we started advertising i think it's important now that i look back <coughs> i think it's important to work for someone exactly. just to know how it goes and then just start your own thing exactly instead of just going in the you know at the beginning just saying yeah i'm just gonna start on you know on my own yeah okay I think, so yeah. that so and that ended when that ended in a life crisis on <laughs> 19... No, hold on. It was 2014. A life, no, 2013 it was. A life crisis. Yeah, it was that. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And so I guess what I want to express to the... Uh, to the audience listening and by the way people watch this on YouTube uh, mm -hmm. and they also listen on a bunch of podcast networks yeah. and stuff um, is that she made a life-changing decision. I mean, various, obviously, life-changing decisions. Um, one was obviously going abroad to learn English, and that changed your life. Um, becoming an entrepreneur changed your life. Yeah. And then your most life-changing de decision, I think, just as a uh, spectator in your life, was the one to go to Paris. Yeah, So, absolutely. And that's where you live right now, yep, right? Yep, exactly. And, that's correct. And you're a professional photographer there. Yeah, exactly. So... 
Can you take us and the audience through the journey of you leaving Medellin and going to uh, to Paris? Yeah. Well, I guess first, uh, Joel brought up a good question earlier that I thought I was thinking about, like, what made you want to leave Medellin? I think it has something to do with this life crisis. Exactly. So okay. I think if you want to get into the life crisis, let's see what what is the life <laughs> what is this life crisis? So what happened was, I was working with Umami, right? Mm-hmm. But this business wasn't working, and at some point I was like, all right, I need to do something else, and I know that I don't want to go back to advertising. So I started uh, studying law. I was like, oh, right, I I maybe I will make it as a lawyer. I remember that. So I started working law, uh, you know, sorry, studying law at the same time that I was working mm-hmm. as an interior designer with this thing. And it was killing me. It was a lot of work at the same time. I had no time. It was like really, really heavy. But I was doing it. I was living with a boyfriend at the time as well. Uh, but I was really lost and depressed. I was okay. like getting to my 30s and just thinking, when am I going to finish law? It's going to be like at least five years. And then I have to do a specialization that it's like, like a master degree that is like two years more or something. And it's like, by the time I'm going to be 40, like by the time I get to do something, I was super, super lost. I thought like life is too hard and I just simply cannot do it. Like I'm just good for nothing. Really. I was like, my, my, my self-esteem was like down. And at that time, um, I went to Barranquilla in Eastern on 2013 to um, visit my parents and to just go to the beach, etc. I went with my best friend Luisa and uh, Santiago, her husband, and my boyfriend at the time. And we were there, and etc. And before that, I bought a camera to learn uh, a little bit how... Uh, to use it and also to take decent photos of my portfolio as an interior designer. And that's when I met you. Uh So uh, I took this little course as well. And my teacher at the time also told me, Gloria, your photos are good and I think you should explore. So I started also doing tutorials and stuff and just being so into it. And then I went to this holiday. And when I was there, I started having headaches and fever. Uh, uh. I just took pills and just didn't think about it and go like that for like a week. And then at the end of the week, I was really sick. And my mother actually forced me to go to the hospital because I didn't want to go because I needed to go back to managing, whatever. And they left me in the hospital and I had a pneumonia. I had a... A swollen in my kidneys and my liver and they didn't know what I had but I had something yeah, that was something. attacking multiple wow. you know organs yeah. so they were super worried and I was two weeks in the hospital very very close on to make it mm-hmm. while I was in the hospital uh, my boyfriend at the time that came to, to Medellin came back to Medellin because he had to work um, went after two weeks to visit me and he was smelling like alcohol when he arrived and I was like why are you smelling like alcohol and he said well uh I had a accident this morning in your car and it's completely gone I'm Whoa. like wow so you're telling me <laughs> while drinking or after or did he so you're oh. telling me that while your girlfriend is in the hospital about to die you went out partying in her car crushed her drunk and come to tell her nice well, then put it in those terms. Yeah. I mean, it's an accident. Everyone can have an accident. I was like, whoa, yeah. all right. So, of course, that was nearly the end of my relationship. So, I was like, heartbroken, car broken, mm-hmm. broke. Car <laughs> broken. I like that. Yeah. Broke. Yeah. Um, I lost the semester in the university because I couldn't attend. Yeah. Uh, my business was going downhill. And I had my self esteem like, rock button and I was like right okay so this is it this is like the worst possible thing possible yeah. thing you know and at the time my my father told me something very wise he said look the worst scenario was that you would die and you didn't <laughs> true so you cannot go down anymore mm-hmm. so from here on everything is a gain I was like that's really liberating. Yeah. Like I can do whatever I want because yeah. I got nothing to, to lose. Yeah. I was like, right, I need to, I need a change. And I knew I needed a change. I just didn't know what to do exactly. 
So I came back to Medellin after like a month and a half, two months or something like that. And when I came to Medellin, I met this guy just the day that I landed. Mm-hmm. And this guy was a guy that um, I rented an apartment on Airbnb, in yeah. fact. He rented from you. He rented from yeah. me and, that's how, I, and mm-hmm. that's how we met. And this guy was a doctor that was from Venezuela, but he was going to Germany. Mm-hmm. So he went to live in Germany. We started having like a long distance relationship or whatever. And, and it was also a motivation. I was like, right, I need a change. I need to get out of here. And this guy's in the other side of the world. Why don't I just go to the other side of the world? Yeah. Now, I didn't want to go to Germany exactly. Because, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. how crazy is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't know any German. I didn't have any money, nothing. But I could go Close. to... Close to, to Paris yeah. because I did learn uh, French because I um, I was obsessed with Paris. I always wanted to live in Paris. And one of my thoughts when I was in the hospital about to die was like, oh, damn, I never got a chance, got a chance to see Paris. How am I going to die? And I didn't <laughs> see, Paris. see Paris. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, that is ridiculous. So... So, yeah, that was it. So I, I did all my papers. I started, you know, applying scholarships, whatever it could, I could get my hands on. And then um, I applied for a university in Paris and I got admitted okay. for photography. For photography. So, okay, good. I'm going to photography. And how long was that exactly. program supposed to be? The, the that was a, a year. A year. That was program. a year. So I went there and when I was in, um, when I arrived to Paris, after a year of, you know, paperwork and stuff, I arrived to Paris September 7, 2014. Never forget that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I went to the university to, you know, do all the paperwork Registry. and stuff. And they said, oh, you're not in photography. You're, not, you're in plastic arts. I'm like, what is that? What is even that? Like, what how- is plastic arts in English? <laughs> that, that's what I guess it's what, what it is. Plastic, plastic arts. arts. It's where you like melt plastic and make shit, right? Is that? No, wait. <laughs> No, don't even, don't that's what I'm don't assuming. Even, don't even no. ask. It's modern art. It's modern art. It's just like that's when you go to to college to learn art. That that's yeah. the car. Yeah. The car. It's called modern art. It's called plastic, plastic art. arts. Okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's like it's called, it's called sculpting, painting, yeah. painting yeah. everything. Plastic. Really, yeah. plastic art is yeah, sculpting yeah, 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 and painting weird like that. Yeah, it's like all the. Anyway, so <laughs> I was like. Oh, I cannot believe what. And then they were like, no, well, there was a thing, confusion, whatever. So they put me in plastic cards and there was nothing they could do about it. I was like, I can't believe I just crossed the ocean for this. Yeah. And to I- make some damn plastic. Uh- <laughs> I thought, first plastic, you, first I thought you, plastic arts was like you were going to become wait, a plastic surgeon. Oh, first, for, a few years back, she was juggling juggling flames in England, asking for money. And now <laughs> you're, you're, you're squishing up go. some plastic in Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Selling it on the street so, corner. Yeah. So what happened is I said, okay, if I'm going to do a photo- photography, I'm going to do it no matter what. So I yeah. went to Google and I put Paris photographer. Okay. And then I saw a bunch of different photographers. I read their bios. I looked at their portfolios or whatever. And... Uh, the very first one, it was my favorite. His, his photos were amazing. What's he his name? Fran Bologna. Fran Bologna? Fran Bologna. He's amazing. Bologna? Bologna. Like, like bologna, like the meat? B O. Is he, is he Italian? L O N I. No, he's from Romania. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. oh Romania. Yeah. Romanian Count Dracula. Bologna. Yeah. Never had Bologna. Yeah, bologna he's actually from Transylvania. Is he? Yeah. What? <laughs> that is probably <laughs> Dracula. Yeah. Disguised <laughs> as a bologna. If I had to guess. And Dracula can he's disguise amazing. himself like whatever. Yeah. yeah. So what happened? Dracula's bologna confirmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what happened is... Um, I, I looked at his stuff and everything. And he was self-thought. And he was foreigner and I was like if somebody can you know identify with my situation would be this guy so I thought oh I need to call this guy and that same week I went to the Alexander the third bridge to take photos of my you know of Paris because he was amazing and I just arrived and I, I wanted to practice at sunrise and there was this guy taking photos of a couple so I asked for his business card. I said, one more contact. Why not? Tell me it's not Fran- Francis it was J. Bologna. Fran Bologna. No, Ooh, that's Dracula. destiny. That's destiny right there. I it think it's Dracula. Re- it was destiny. So it was this amazing. guy that you said, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. You got up at sunrise yeah. to go take pictures. Yeah. Where? 
in a in a bridge. In a bridge, bridge. and he was there taking pictures of a couple. Yeah. Oh, what were they like a like a new, newly married couple yeah. or something? So he was taking pictures of them. Yeah. That's his job. Yeah. And you see him there, and you get his business card, and you're like, oh shit, this is this the is, guy that I was exactly. just stalking. <laughs> <laughs> you episode season three yeah. for those who watch Netflix. It was amazing. Okay, <laughs> cool. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So I called him the, that week, and I said, Can um, I ask a question before yeah, you go? That when, when when you dialed the phone and, and you did you go, hey Fran, or did you say, hey Mr. Baloney? Do you remember what you Monsieur said? Bologna. Monsieur Bologna. I have Bologna. no idea what I said. Dang, you should ask him. <laughs> you call me Bologna or anyways? Yeah. So anyway, so you're talking to Mr. Bologna. Yeah, so I was, uh, I talked to him and I said, hey, hello, this is, uh, my name is Gloria. I just came uh, from Colombia. I don't know one. I, I, I know no one in the city, uh, but I want to learn photography. So I want to be your assistant yeah. and I will trade uh, knowledge for work. I, I I can be your assistant for free. Okay. Uh, but you teach me. Okay. And he said, yeah, okay, come to one of um, one photo session. It's like, okay, perfect. So I arrived there. It was a photo session with a Chinese uh, pre-wedding couple. It was, she was in a beautiful, huge gown, and they were like, they, she would change in the middle of the session. So I was, you know, carrying around all the bags and helping her changing in the bathroom and everything. And it was like six hours. Yeah. So at the end of it, he said, do you want to get lunch? I was like, yeah, sure. So we sat down and he said, I really want to thank you. You were very helpful today. With you, we, we could accomplish a lot more. And, um, and yeah, tell me your story. So I told him why I was there mm-hmm. and everything. He told me his story. And we really clicked. We connected right away. And it was like friendship right away. Does he, does he look younger now than before? Yeah, what <laughs> do you want me to? I to just want to know. That? Does he look younger than when you met he him? He is not Dracula. Oh, okay. I'll just check in, man. I don't Although, know. I was expecting her to go, and then he sucked the blood out of my neck. <laughs> and, two weeks. and now I'm the undead. Yeah, you know, you're undead. But Maybe he, you're but undead. But he does say that he doesn't like garlic, though. He doesn't that like garlic. He doesn't like and garlic. And he's afraid of the cross. He is a creep. He doesn't go to and, churches. And you've never seen him out only at sunrise in the morning. Yeah, and yeah, he sunrise. Real he quick. Home. There's something going on here. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think he's safe because he does wedding pictures and he has to go inside churches. Sunglasses Nothing has happened. Though, right? The guy so, is. How yeah. long ago? He hasn't burned. How long was this we- uh, ago? Was this when you met him? That was December 2014. So does Count Baloney still do wedding photography nowadays? Even better. He's oh, so amazing. his business has grown. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's the guy that you told me charges a minimum of 8,000 euros. Is that him? That does weddings? Mm, you said there's some guy that his wedding no. packages start at like 8,000 euros. No, 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 but it's oh, not, not him. him. Okay, that's... What yeah, is, but, but that's he, probably he's videography. Got, he, yeah. he's, oh, yeah, he, he already... He's grown now. He's grown his team now. So he's got four photographers and one videographer working wow. for him. So... And it's yeah. great. And I remember... Um, because in 2014 was when we were still broke, oh. still trying to get shit off the ground here yeah. in Medellin we with were our all broke. digital uh, marketing. <laughs> um, but yeah, but we, yeah. So anyway, we, um, I remember that we were in that position and then you were over there and we're like, wow, she made it. Yeah, we thought <laughs> we, you made it. We were like, damn, she made it because we saw your pictures. We saw you were part of their team. Uh, can we say the name of the team, the the name of the company? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Kiss Me in Paris. Kiss Me in Paris. Yeah. Um, which is an amazing website. If you go to kissmeinparis.com or whatever. It's amazing. You so see what happened images. is, I started being his assistant and then his editor. And he, about four months afterwards, he went to the U.S. to take photos of uh, of a wedding. He went to the U.S.? Yeah. Okay. To take photos of a wedding with a friend of his. They were friends and stuff, and he invited him over. So these these two guys, they had the idea of creating a company to to have photographers uh, taking photos for them. Okay. So when he showed my photos to his friend, his business partner said, "Dude, here it is. We Here's need the we need yeah. we need to get this girl, you know, working right away." So when he came back to Par- uh, to Paris, he said, "Look." Right now, job. you're a principal photographer. You got a job. I was like, wow. wait, what? Still 2014? This happened all no, again? No, no, no. It was April 2015, I think. Okay. And I was like, from one day, I was 
a the assistant, uh, the assistant. Editing, yeah. next day i'm a principal photographer and he's got so much work yeah that i just could, i didn't stop yeah. seven you know seven days a week uh, yeah. i was just working and doing one two three four sessions per day and were you getting paid like what, what were you getting, you, were you getting paid like a salary or how did that how did they pay you for that as yeah a, well before we, we created a company i was started legalizing the whole and thing you were and part everything. of the company or were you a contractor in the company? no no, no i was a contractor in the okay. company okay but yeah. they paid you a fair wage for yeah everything was fair okay yeah, it was great they were amazing with me and i only have Things to help, to thank them yeah, for. Yeah. I'm, I'm super grateful. They okay. really open all. Big the shout doors out to, to them. Me. We need to throw yeah. their website. Absolutely, up on here so Fran Changes. If you're watching this, thank you so much, guys. You're amazing. Yeah. Thanks. Right. So uh, yeah, and everybody needs support. I think I one of the the yeah. main things that I that I preach obviously is is business and and moving forward. So yeah, I guess one of my questions is that when you were there, when you were trading your hours of training for knowledge. Yeah. Who how were you paying for your life? Like Thank thankfully I got amazing parents and they were helping They supported me. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they supported Big me. Big ups to your parents yeah, because yeah, imagine you would yeah. not be here absolutely. without your their support. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But then afterwards when I started getting money I was like I called and I was like, guys, thank you so much. I'm I'm good. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure they're like super proud yeah. of of what you've become. So yeah. So I guess moving forward, you you were a photographer for Kiss Me in Paris, yeah. amazing pictures, and then I remember that you were trying to branch out on your own. Yeah, the thing is, I um, I worked with them for about a year, and then afterwards, I I was interested in boudoir as well. I know. Uh, so for the people that don't know, boudoir is a uh, sexy and sensual photos for women. Softcore porn. Not really. Uh, come on. Okay. So on some of these med- lonely, rainy Medellin nights, I will open up your boudoir Instagram. Collection, yeah. And, and it'll help me go to bed. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Long, cold nights when you don't want to be too sleazy, you know? Well, it's never cold in Medellin. <laughs> and your, girl, and your girl could catch you watching those and uh, it doesn't count. Yeah, no, I don't know. You are very heterosexual. I'm very heterosexual, so... Yeah, we have different, you know. No, you don't. You, you. I mean, you photograph I, the softcore porn, and other people consume it. N- well, uh, but I mean, I guess it's not. It's it's more art. Yes, it's, it's more art. art. Definitely, definitely, art. Definitely. Definitely. But um, so so you, so you've done the boudoir thing. Yeah. And so, how's yeah, that going? Yeah. So we 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 at at some point uh, the company as well grew a lot. Uh, so we se- we got separate ways where I started doing my thing. They were super supportive. They helped me a lot with everything, you know, advising me what to do and everything. Count Baloney? Both. Right. Uh, Count Baloney and Chang Zelzel, who was... And, wh- and say his, what? Uh, Chang Zelzel. Hmm? How can you say that so straight faced? Like that's just a normal name. Chang what? Well, probably he, if he's looking at this right now, <laughs> she he said would, he would have it, and Chang Alpha have Seltzer. It. I'm like, <laughs> no. it's like a, a, a fizzy drink. A fizzy he's, he's, he's probably having a, a laugh. Jungle. He's like, probably what? having a laugh, you Holy know, saying, shit, that's a combo, why do that? you pronounce my name so badly? But, but I the, just, that's his business yeah. partner. So yeah, they were yeah. super supportive of they you were, yeah. branching out. Um, and doing your own thing, but yeah, did you and start? They would always help me. But right away, did you start with the boudoir or? No, 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 no. So what I did was uh, I I created my own website. Well, there was another thing is I I also worked uh, with another photographer for a while, and I created my own um, website and I started ranking, ranking. And actually, you helped me a lot with that. I know. Yeah. So I also have a lot to thank you, both of you guys, because when I was creating my own website, uh, you guys helped me out with my content, uh, wrote articles for me, and helped me with my SEO, taught me how to rank and, you know, be on Google and stuff. And I definitely, definitely, definitely wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you helping me with that. Because I started to get my own inquiries thanks Thanks to that, to that, that actually yeah. people started finding me. And that was amazing. <laughs> that website could have just gone into, you know, nowhere. Yeah, yeah the abyss of the exactly, internet. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But you actually guys were the ones that, you know, taught me and, you know, helped me, you know, ranking. And 
Yeah. So big, big, big yeah. thank you for the We don't know much, but uh, yeah. we do know internet marketing. <laughs> so there's one, there's one thing I noticed that about Gloria's story here that is different from a lot of people is that how, how long did you carry the long dresses for and, 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 and do editing for, for the count? For count- Four months. Four months. So, you know, it's so different because I was thinking about it. You're like, and then you made your website. People started coming and you worked with an already established group of photographers who started to throw you business. I mean, in sharp contrast to myself in photography, Andrew and other in, in SEO, um, me also making websites and stuff. We had to do, you, you sort of fast track and jumped over a step entirely just by offering knowledge for, uh, for your service in that you didn't have to go pound the pavement every single day looking for clients. It's almost like automatically clients came to you. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? And that's a, that's a huge blessing. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. maybe we got to think about it. Um, people might write some books and stuff on this, but maybe giving your time to somebody who's already in the game is the best way to fast track having to go and do what we that's, did, which is like, oh, yeah. that's I exactly I what did. I told you at the beginning, yeah. what happened with Umami. And it's like, you need to start working with someone or for someone that knows what what's the business look like. And then afterwards you can go on your own. Yeah. But you know, doing it otherwise and just starting yourself, you know, yeah. it's, it's it's rough. It's rough. But that's amazing, amazing that you that you progress so fast. Because we're only in 2020. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I can relate because I don't remember the last time I ever got a salary um, apart from literally last year when we started to give ourselves salaries mm-hmm. from the company, from, from Red Door Studios. Um, I worked for free for bankruptcy attorneys in the United States just to learn marketing from them. I worked for free um, literally selling perfume on the street on consignment. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's no salary there. Um, yeah, I've, not, I've never actually really had, I've never been really a, sa- a salaried uh, employee. So mm-hmm. I don't know what that's like. But I think it's kind of my upbringing because my parents have never really, they've never been salaried employed either. They've always been entrepreneurs, immigrants, especially uh, being illegal immigrants for a time in the United States where you can't really be a salaried employee. You have to become an entrepreneur or starve um, where, where we, I couldn't skip that, that part of like, oh, going for uh, trading my time for, for, for knowledge. I actually had to train trade time for knowledge and hustle to get extra cash to survive. True. So it, True. it prolonged my learning experience yeah. for, by, by about 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, 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 I mean, same as try, try, I was just trying to think about, as you said that, I have been a salaried employee, employee for four years. Mm. And um, I had, uh, I think, eight months more um, that I worked for uh, to a year for a research firm before I first started um jumping around Latin America, but in total, I mean, I'm 39 years old and in total I've, I've worked on a salary uh, for five years and the last time was 2010. But it taught you stuff. I, oh, definitely. I think like Andrew asked a very interesting, interesting question about marketing and you said something like, for example, oh, there's tons of opportunities here. The funny thing is I'd always find it funny that uh, I'd call it kids want to jump out of uh, an undergraduate program and jump into a master's and MBA and jump into this and acquiring all this knowledge about book knowledge about marketing and book knowledge about business. But when you get into the quote unquote real world, yeah, it's a yeah. disaster yeah, because yeah. all that theory and stuff, it's great to structure stuff to mm-hmm. organize. It teaches mm-hmm. you organizational mm-hmm. skills, but mm-hmm. I agree with you. You got to get out there, go with somebody that knows what you want to do and then maybe go back and study again a yeah. second time. And I stuff think, not. I think working for someone is like doing a master degree. It, it is. is. Yeah. It is. You really actually and you get paid for it. Exactly. Yeah. And if you screw it up, it's with somebody else's money. <laughs> well, I thank God. I thank True. God. I screwed up because I did an exam called the GMAT in order. That's the exam you do to go to do your MBA. Your, uh, and my thing was to do really well and get a fully paid scholarship. Mm. And I got top grades in the English, and I got like uh, C level or C plus in the math, which wasn't enough to give me a full scholarship. But if I decided, oh fuck it, I'm still gonna go do an MBA. I would have spent fifty two thousand Canadian dollars for eight months, and I would have had that nice shiny piece of paper. But I've been fifty two thousand more in debt exactly. and at that point I was already about 35 yeah, yeah. and so I decided not to and uh, headed out into the real world um, and not get a job which is, is basically what we all um, we all did uh-huh. well you know how at the Medellin podcast we like to be kind of jovial 
and robust and rotund like this little Christmas guy here called Santa Claus. Well, today we want to give back to the community and give back to our sponsors. So today we want to plug Iha Mia Coffee. Joel, tell them a little bit about Iha Mia Coffee. Well, Andrew, for one, I'm not the one that really knows a lot about the textures of the mouth that you do. But when this hits my tongue, man, it's like an orgasm in my mouth. Um, and 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 it, this is actually what happens to me when I drink a cup of Ihamia. I grow hair, and it spouts out just like that. If if we had a cup right now, I would show you. Well, now you know, boys and girls. If you want pubic hair on your head, yeah. drink some Ihamia coffee straight from Medellin, Colombia, right downstairs. And if you be a good boy and girl this year, big old fat man Santa Claus might just give you a bag. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! So you're a Colombian woman nearing your 30s at the point where you're hitting, uh, you're, you're going to Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, had you been to Paris or Europe before? No. Nope. England, yes, you had. England. Okay, so England. Paris, no. So you're, you're, you're rolling into Paris as a Colombian woman. Yeah. Thank God you spoke English at yeah. that time too. Um, but what, what did it feel like being a Colombian woman by yourself, no family or friends or whatever with you? landing in Paris and trying to socialize with people and start a life? It was an adventure. I liked it. Okay. Um, I had this uh, Venezuelan boyfriend at the time. Okay. And he came from Germany to meet me at the airport, help me with the bags and everything. So okay. I was, it wasn't as rough. Okay. Um, and, I, and I arrived to a house where I was sharing uh, this apartment with another guy. And uh, Colombian guy? No, no, no. So it was it was the uh, the aunt of a guy, a French guy that I knew that I knew here. He told me my my aunt has this this uh, room for rent. Okay. So they are they were teachers. They were living in the countryside and they kept these Parisian apartments for them to come once a week. Uh, sorry, once a month or something okay. to do their, you know, whatever they need to do. And their son was living in the apartment. So okay. they had one extra room that okay. was, was available okay. and they rented to me. So I arrived there. They were super kind, super nice people. <coughs> so I had... Uh, oh, good place yeah, to stay. Yeah, but, but what I mean, what I mean, and that's, that's really good that you had some level of support. What I mean is when... You walked out onto the street, people knew right away you weren't from Paris. They, they still do. They still do. So In fact, if, when I'm in Paris and I go to a restaurant and speak in French, they reply in English. Wow. Every single time. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 but, but they do that. And w w when they go, oh, so where are you from? Uh, how would they say it in the French? To be undo. But in, in English, English, French, how would you say, where are you from? Here they would go, where are where, you from? Where are you from? Okay. <laughs> from? So what do you know. do at that particular point? You tell them you're from oh, well, Colombia. From Colombia yeah. You say Medellin, Colombia. Yeah. What do you say? You got to represent Medellin everywhere you go. You can't just be like Colombia. I No, I actually say Colombia, South America. So people okay. know exactly where, you know, the globe is located. And country. what is their reaction when you say Colombia? Uh, there are mixed uh, reactions. Normally, they're very, uh, they, lo they love Colombia. Okay. They're like, oh my God, no way. That's so cool. They're not, like always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Normally, uh, from time to time, you always have the oh, do you have any drugs or yeah, yeah, powder squad or whatever it is, and but I just don't pay attention. It's like yeah, whatever. I mean, I mean, yeah. When, when when I say I'm Canadian, people, Americans, everybody will be able to the aboot. Uh, yeah. Do you know what a boot? Where's yeah. the where's the where's, where's the, the poutine? The, the syrup, yeah, the, the syrup. maple syrup. So there's stuff. I mean, well, that's good stuff. I it's mean, good it's stuff. Good, yeah, 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 it's good stuff. It's not like oh. Have you decapitated or cut anyone's limbs off for cocaine lately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a little better. I guess asking if you have maple syrup is a little better than yeah. asking yeah. if you have the worst cocaine. Part, cocaine. Yeah. When I grew, when I was growing up, the worst part is, you know, I'd say, yeah, I'm Colombian, like in high school, whatever. Yeah. Oh, go, you got drugs? I'm like, yeah. How yeah. much you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how much you want? Speak to the Colombian guy over there, Andres. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so still to today, you're you say you're from Colombia, and they mm. they make those comments. Have you ever had any yeah, negative experience being Colombian, where you felt like, wow, I feel really terrible for my people, or no, or you've always? Well, recently I had a thing. I don't know if it was well. It wasn't completely tied up to the fact that I was Colombian. But I was doing um, like a bureaucracy kind of paperwork in Paris 
and I handed a paper that I needed uh, to be replaced okay. um, in this office. And the woman said, I, w- I will not do it. You can just go. Uh, this is a valid paper and I have no obligation to give you this. I was like, but I need to, I need to, because I'm going to travel. Otherwise I have to cut my, my trip chart. And she's like, I don't care. But then behind me, like two people behind me, there was this guy who was an American violinist mm-hmm. that works with me in, in sometimes there for the proposals. Yeah, yeah. Because when a guy goes to propose to a girlfriend, whatever, sometimes yeah. they hire a violinist. So I, I know this guy. And his paper expired three days before mine. Oh, no. Yeah. She took the paper and replaced it to, for him. He was wow. a he was a man, American man. I'm a Colombian woman. I wow. don't know if it was due to that or she just simply didn't like me, but it happened. You see, this is the time, Gloria, let me teach you something. You got to use your friends. This is when you call the fucking count. <laughs> count and you be like, Maloney. Count Maloney, I got a problem going on over here. I need your assistance. And she, she so you, did you never got your, you never got your. No, no, no. I have to go back to. 20, uh, 20 days before my actual return because I couldn't get this paper. Wow, what because, an asshole. Because a negligent Can woman... Can you call a woman an there. asshole? I don't Men know. are assholes, but are women... Is there such a thing as... Is there a female version? It happened. Okay, so it's... So, yeah, okay. Um, it's all right. So, so that, that happens to you sometimes, and I'm just trying to... I'm trying to think but like, normally, no. Like, I normally don't feel discriminated or... No, it's fine. It's fine. Right. So, I guess... Uh, Coming back to Medellin, obviously you come back frequently. Every year you come Every back? Every year. How do you, how would you compare in, in regards to uh, safety? Uh, Medellin and Paris. Well, <laughs> it's different. So, Paris is not the most peaceful place in the world, but it's not as aggressive. Like, I feel safer going, you know, walking on the street on, at, 2 a.m. in the morning. Although I, yeah, it's like I, I take care of my surroundings and stuff, but uh, I feel safer. This is outside would, of the touristic zone? Like, where are you walking at 2? I'm not talking. Exactly. Yeah. I would not go to an ugly, bad area of Paris that there are. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't do that. But normally I feel safer. I would not do that here. I would not just walk alone at 2 a.m. in the morning. There's no way. Okay. But, uh, there are loads of thieves in Paris. Like, you have no idea. But what kind of thieves? Oh. Like, thieves like that hold you up at knife point or no. pickpockets? Pick spo- pickpockets. Pickpockets. But yeah, like Europe insane, is full of pickpockets. Insane, insane, insane. You have no idea how many. It's, it's crazy. Like, I, I warn my Colombian friends and I tell them, please be careful. There are loads of thieves. Yeah. They're like, oh, we come from Colombia. It's yeah. all right. They still get robbed. <laughs> really? I told you. Yeah. The yeah. robbers get robbed. <laughs> so, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I've heard that the mice actually, uh, they like steal food and sometimes they hide in people's hats. <laughs> yeah, the mice have actually get on the, the bus. Yeah, and they make, and there's some of them are <laughs> shut out there. They make this thing Restaurant. called Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that yeah, for real? Pa- pa- it's for real. Paris is full, the city full of, rats. of rats. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, yeah they pickpockets of rats. Dang. Yeah. Anyway. That sucks. Yeah. And are Parisians as uh, bad as people say they are? Like as mean or as uh, no. uh, snobby? No, well, no. The things are changing. Things are changing a lot. I think people, new generations are traveling more. They're receiving more and more, more pe- tourists. tourists. Yeah. Last year, it was like 40 million people. Holy shit. 40 million. Just for Paris. That's almost the population of Colombia. That's ridiculous. That's a lot of people. Yeah. That's a lot of people so just for to tourism. Change. Exactly. So people get used to things get to change. It's kind of like so here. It's, like, it's kind of like here. Mm, things have, yeah. uh, it's obviously less than 40 million, <laughs> but things have changed. For example, yes. would you have ever thought growing up here that Comuna 13 would be a tourist destination? Never. Never. Ever in your life, no, right? No, no, no. Ever. Just never go yeah. there. Like even me growing up and hearing about Colombia or Medellin and like Comuna 13, Eh, Manrique, mm. eh, Sa- eh, San Juan, San Javier. I was yeah. like, man, that shit's dangerous out there. Yeah. And now those are like de- tourist destinations. Yeah. There's actually like the electric stairs and there's like bars yeah. and 
cold brew coffee that you could get. Like cold brew coffee in Comuna Tres. Yeah, that's crazy. That's unheard yeah. of. But but things change. And yeah. They're changing for the better. And fast. But yeah. why but why you're saying fast. changing for better? Like for example, like here the food scene is changing rapidly. Um the number of people that are speaking English have, has changed rapidly because in 2011 when I got here, it was very rare for somebody to even engage in you in English beyond what is your name or something like that. Now people are going on with full conversations. Mm. What is it about You're saying it's changing rapidly. I think Andrew asked, uh, do the French live up to this repetition, which is probably a stereotype of the whole of France, but they're, they're, they're stereotypes. What is the reputation that, that, that they're getting better at that you're saying? What, what, what's your, compared to Colombian people, you walk out on the street in Paris, you start a conversation, you're in an elevator. How do you feel here in terms of warmth and people compared to Paris? Well, there's definitely differences. I mean, here, for example, people hug. A lot. Yeah. We touch. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And it's normal. But when they come here, they think you're hitting on them, right? People so, think you're hitting on them. Yeah. If okay. you if you bring a fo a foreigner, uh, yeah. like a French person or a German person, and you put them in the middle of Medellin, and you get them with 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 people from Medellin, they will think, God, I mean, this person is hitting on me. No, it's like, yeah. yes, how are right. you? Right. It's yeah, fine yeah, 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 and stuff. Yeah. That's normal for us. Yeah. We touch. Right. We and hug. Not only we that, smile. we kiss. We literally kiss. to say hello. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen that actually. And then they're like, yeah. oh, this person's hitting on me. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. He's just trying, he's just being kind. Right. It's all yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Okay. You yeah. get that a lot. Yeah, that's true. I've, I've seen that where um, I'll meet like a, a foreign woman or whatever, and she'll be like, whoa. This mm -hmm. person's trying to kiss me right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really just saying hello. Exactly. So, so you have to know. It's like, oh, hello. Yeah. And between, and between friends, we actually hug. Like yeah. proper hug. Like a yeah. proper hug. Not like the a weird, proper hug. Not the really like, yeah. It's so good to see you. And you hug for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my yeah, favorite. Yeah. Uh, for a long time. Yeah. yeah. yeah but but uh, yeah. Sometimes when you shake someone's hand from another country. Oh, yeah. And I have some countries where I've met so many people now that. There are countries where you know you're gonna get the limp oh, handshake. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> and it's a man. <laughs> Cultures, yeah. And, you, yes, and you're like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> what is like a real wet right fish, now? Like a wet fish in the market. <laughs> a, like no, if you picked it up and you can't hold it, so it's slipping around, yeah. sort of like this. Yeah, yeah. or like yeah, a like, oh, no, not even that was too hard. Or it's like Play-Doh. You're a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's really bad. It's really yeah. bad. But that's yeah, it's true. I've never really met somebody in Colombia with a overly delicate, soft. I'm scared like to touch your hand. Hand shake. Yeah, that's true. No. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so being a woman, one of the things that I, I like to uh, touch on is basically being a woman here mm -hmm. versus being a woman in France. Um, well, France is huge, but you're in Paris. So what do you feel as a woman? Because women have their own um, issues on a daily basis that they have to deal with, whether it's um, stereotype struggles in, 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 in the workplace, sexism, all sorts of stuff. Do you feel more like you are equally valued, you're an equal person in Paris or here, or is there any difference at all to you? There, there, there is difference, absolutely. Uh, here, we are used to getting a lot of attention from guys all the time. Okay. Like, guys, look at you on the street, Um, and when you are even with a friend, he would, you know, try to be as nice as he can with you, open the door for you, yeah. like be there. You're just a man. It's like, how do you feel about like, that? When I, when I went there, I was like, whoa, no, no attention whatsoever. I'm just some random, you know, man, man. So how do you feel about that? That's quite interesting. How do you feel about just being another man? It's all right. You get used to it. It's fine. But but is it? But but okay. So a lot of people fight for equality. Yeah. Right. So me I included. Would think like me included. In yeah. So. But the thing is, the thing is, I consider myself a feminist. Yeah. In the fact that I do believe that we have equal rights. Okay. Okay. But we're not the same. As men, exactly. That's true. Women and men are different biologically. Yeah. Like we you know have different parts yeah different parts different you know emotions different emotions and stuff yeah. exactly to it's like learn we are different all right um so i'm not uh one you know feminist that try to be just just as a man yeah, i'm yeah. not a man and i'm proud of not being a man i love being a woman and i want to explore my femininity 
as it is. Yeah. Right. But when there's no one to explore your femininity, that's a problem. No, 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 no. It's not a problem. Okay. It's not a problem. Just simply, it feels different. Okay. But it's fine. Yeah, I think it's sort of like if you reverse that. If I went to, a... it's just that you you're used to being having a lot of attention, yeah. and then all of a sudden you don't. But it's all right. But how do it's so fine. then? How do how do Colombian girls? I thought well, that's got to be a European thing because I know Latina women in the U.S. As far as I know, at least in Canada, get a lot of attention just because. Well, more in Canada, so because they're more different looking, they're more exotic. Yeah, so but I don't go- know. guys are not so upfront. As here. here it is, yeah. Well, it depends on which part of the United States. I know the boys down in New York would strongly disagree with that. They are very, very aggressive. Okay. Then again, I don't, I don't well, know. Well, I, that I'm would be like France. in a bar I'm drinking like, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. but not like sober in True, school. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. on the metro, no. No, they got to okay. go take a class to do that. They don't even look at you in the metro. They're wow. Like, Wow. Very okay, that's that's pretty cool. Shy, yeah, it's so. called it's uh it's uh it's called uh, the emasculation of the world. Like men are becoming more emasculated because women are getting more rights and more um, more equality. Mm-hmm. So guys probably, or it seems like to me that they've become more emasculated, and I don't see that as a bad thing. I think you know it's an equal yeah. playing field now yeah, like yeah. the woman now Definitely. the balls in your court girls yeah. come and hit on me <laughs> <laughs> but not even that i think i think like what you're saying is it's really it's really it's yes, really please. true because you've you've made a good still point. haven't gotten hit on once <laughs> <laughs> like Darn. like the thing is the thing is I, and I, I honestly um believe that okay so yes maybe the men feel more emasculated because before it was basically caveman stuff. I'll just go take what I want. I'm the man. Unga, unga. Unga, unga. I'm gonna go take what I want. But I think and now- like the, the the term emasculated takes is it has a negative connotation. Yeah. But in this day and age, being emasculated, it's almost like it, it, it's accepted. So that's it, my point. That's where I was going. I don't think you need to be emasculated in order to treat somebody and be an equal. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Keep mm-hmm. your quote unquote manlyhood, but still treat the person. Yeah. Yeah. You don't look at it as like, oh my God, it's a woman. Oh, I can't say, I can't do, I can't whatever. Just keep that side and don't be emasculated. Just treat equally. But that's, mm-hmm. that's where I was getting with that. Mm-hmm. That I think. Yeah, that yeah. There's and a- what happens in, in Colombia, I think, and, and I've seen it a lot, is that in, in machista cultures, because I grew up around a lot of Mexican people, Central American people, mm-hmm. and they're very machista. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the 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 patriarch of the family is the, the man and mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But they become emasculated later. It, yeah. yeah. It's, it's always in those countries, either here in Latin America, even in, in, in the Arabic world, it's always like that. Like, He's the king of the of house, the castle, yeah. but she's the one that really, rules. really runs the house. Yeah, she rules yeah. everything. Yeah. Every, she manages the money. She yeah. manages everything. She tells she's got the she last got, word she's got and everything. The kids but she her. just let him play the part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone sees that he is the boss, right. but he's really not. Yeah, exactly. Does exactly. It, what is that thing they say about it's be every, behind every strong man is a stronger woman or something right. like that? Yeah. I think mm. they, they talk about that with. Yeah. Um, Mandela with Martin Luther be with with a lot of like at least um, uh, activists that there's always this woman that's even stronger behind them. You know, you've got Obama, you've got Michelle, um, you've got Trump, you've got the stronger Ivana. woman. Ivana, she's Ivanka. stronger. Ivanka. Definitely Ivanka. 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 I had to oh, come on. If you're going to mention Martin Luther King and, and, and these people, we got to mention Donald Trump. Hey, I actually got a question because, uh, as you mentioned before, you do boudoir photography Mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that has a lot to do the rise of those type of photography and with the with the advent of Instagram and social media like that, you see a lot of um, (laughs) a plethora of like just models and models, quote unquote, you know, and, and I think there's a very clear distinction between what you would call the booty uh, Instagrammers and the actual boudoir artistic, you know that you you see that they actually put care into the 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 lingerie they choose, the light they choose, the photographers they they work with. So I kind of wanted to know your your stance on this whole like Instagram Twitter thing Good question and how you see that as actually helping the empowering of women versus the the degradation of the image of women yeah okay that's a very good question mm-hmm. so when i i don't remember exactly how i discovered boudoir photography but i knew that when i saw this i thought this is great it's a great idea i want to do this something you know something for myself so i started doing my research 
And I found that 98% of what I could find on the internet was horrible. Yeah. So... Like tacky? Tacky, mm. disgusting, cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. I was like... No, 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 it's, no, 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 no. Which was the joke I made at the start. It nor, You more find porn than you do find oh, art in nudity or art in semi nudity. Yep. I was like, I would, me as a woman, I would never yeah. put my most intimate image in front of this. Yeah. Oh, this is terrible. I thought I could do it better. I definitely know I can do it better. So that's how I got in, interested in stuff. And my main purpose is to make it, you know, beautiful, elegant, artistic, you know, to enhance this this image of a woman and make it, you know, beautiful. And it's not just like you're you're doing a bunch of model pictures. No, no, it's, it's regular, the regular women. Regular women, women. But you're making them look spectacular. And exactly. feel spectacular. And they feel spectacular. spectacular. Maybe they haven't heard. So or important. Seen yet. Yeah. So important. Yeah. It's not only how they look, it's how they feel. Yeah. It's because there is a lot of psychology behind it. Mm-hmm. I need to make them feel beautiful. I need to make them feel empowerful. Yeah. Uh, some of them come with a lot of, uh, you know, self-esteem issues and stuff. We... Like, there's no woman on the earth that is like, yeah, I'm perfectly happy yeah. with my body. Yeah. Everything's right. great. No, 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 no. Yeah. Like, we all have something that's like, oh, I wish I had ever, whatever. Yeah. So, um, when I, when, when, when you were talking about the Instagram and stuff, um, I definitely think this, um, this boulder photography really uh, put women women into value because we all the time I other oh I'm not that I'm not, I'm not as slim as Kate Moss so I'm ugly mm-hmm. or or my boobs oh, are not as big as exactly as and so I'm whatever. not whatever I don't deserve I'm not you know whatever nobody's gonna like me nobody who's I, I cannot get a boyfriend because who's gonna yeah, yeah want me like this you mm-hmm. know it's all of these insecurities but also. Is the sexual fact? Is the one the fact that you have to be a good girl, and good girls don't do this. Mm-hmm. They don't explore their yeah. sexuality. Okay. They're not sensual. Yeah, that's a good point. They're not. You know, it's like oh, sexy lingerie. No, that's that's not for that's good dirty. Girls. Yeah, that's that's dirty, and that's not. Well, guess what? We have desire too, and it's okay. Yeah, it's perfectly fine to feel desire, to be sexual, to want to have sex. It's fine. So wait, yeah. is this? But is this? Is this something that? So uh, just about the women that are coming to do this. Two, uh, there's many questions in one. Like who? When they get these photos, are they giving them to their spouse? Are they hanging them in their house? Why are they? Because I assume that after so that shoot, so many yeah, things what are they that doing? I get. Like I get so many things I get from. I'm going to get married. I want to give them for the wedding night or my, you know, I want to give it to my boyfriend or her birthday, whatever it is. That's one. But I also get, I got divorced. I, my self-esteem is shit and I really need to, you know, yeah, lift, yeah, lift, lift it. Or, or I've been a mom for the last three years. I had no life for the last three years. I felt like a mom, but not like a woman. I really need to find a little bit of, you know, yeah sex appeal again and stuff wait okay. and just just to correct something because you're going there and it's something that for for those who've been following along so what gloria told me uh, correct me if i'm wrong 90 percent of your clients are american or chinese american or chinese in france in, in france, france. Yeah, yeah so that's a great fact that people need to know so mm-hmm. people are coming from the u.s yeah to France yeah. and looking for boudoir photography yes. because you're not finding them, they're finding you. Yeah. So they're in pr- Paris and they're in France. They're like, I just broke up. I have these kids. I'm going to do something sexy in Paris for myself. I'm going to tell boyfriend. you a story, a very interesting story, story yeah. right now. But let me finish with the, with, with, yeah. the, with the options and stuff. I have had, for example, guys that want to give uh, to, to their girlfriends or spouses as a gift. Okay. I've had had women that have had breast breast cancer and then they had a reconstruction and they want to celebrate mm-hmm. their new boobs. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So they're like you can see the reasons for doing it. They're so different. It's it's really you know. It you should start interviewing some of those people. Yeah, I think it'd be really it's, good. it's amazing. But all let me tell you this story about this woman that I did. She was amazing. She was from the U.S. and. Last year, she was in Paris while there was the, the marathon. She was with her uh, husband. And she was running. Uh, no, she wasn't wearing. She, she saw the, the marathon happening. And she thought, oh, I wish one day I would run this marathon. 
And then she went back to the U.S. And the guy uh, broke up with her and asked her for the divorce. And two weeks later, the guy got married. With wow. another woman. Yeah, two weeks later. And she was, so he was going on with this relationship yeah, for a while. Okay. And she was devastated. And she thought about her trip to Paris. And the boudoir session that she had done before, she had done it for him. So she said, I'm going to train. I'm going to go next year to the to Paris. I'm going to run the marathon and I'm going to do a new Hell boudoir yeah, session girl. for me. Wow, good. good. Not wow. for anyone. Yeah. Wow. And she did that. And how did she look different? Did she feel different? Was her she attitude was different? She was amazing. She was okay. happy. And she ran her marathon, did the boudoir. Marathon. She, do, you have, do you have, do you have, do you have uh, both photos on your Instagram? I, I have photos of like, her. Okay, so her for Instagram. those, for and those. Then, are, hold on, hold on, hold on. And we became friends, in fact. And after, I think, a month and a half or something, she went to travel on Eastern Europe with her uh, sister. And she was in Prague in a cafe with uh, her. And there was two guys sitting on a table. They started talking. The guy happened to be a professor in England. And they were, you know, in holidays too, two yeah. friends. And they met, they, you know, got in a relationship and now they're together. Wow. And the guy's moving to the U.S. with her. That's wow. Amazing. That's really cool. That's, you're That's sparking, really cool. Were you like a Cupid? Yeah, you're like Crazy, a, yeah. Cupid with they a camera. They call you the Colombian arrow. Cupid. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the original <laughs> Colombian Cupid, Gloria <laughs> Villa. And she doesn't shoot with arrows, she shoots with a camera. So for those of you guys that are listening on, um, on podcast or whatever, uh, watch the video because with Gloria's consent, while she's talking about this, We'll have the uh, uh, slideshow of, of uh -huh. photos rotating of the people that she's talking about. I think that would yeah. be amazing for the viewers yeah. that watch the YouTube And the photos show. from before when you were shooting engagement shoots and weddings and all the way to now. Yeah. Hey, maybe you could die. I still do that. I still do that. <laughs> and yeah. Not so often, but I still do it because I love it as well. Yeah. I mean, and, and I it's can so just fun. say, you know, it's I always fun. tell you, it's, uh, uh, Gloria has... Um, amazing work, very, I think, very distinguishable in terms of if you put like five photos up, I can pick which one's yours because you've developed your style. Not on the boudoir side because I'm not as familiar with, with that work, but if you put up five different engagement photos, I could probably pick one which is yours because of your editing style, your lighting and, and, and certain things. So I think like you have managed to fast track really fast. You're like, you're, that, spray, that, you're Usain Bolt that, of photography. I mean, that five is, years. That is a very flattering uh, comment coming from you because uh you're amazing i mean you're an amazing photographer and i just have admiration for you so whoa, wow yeah thanks. well you both suck at photography um <laughs> and <laughs> and you're the best and no uh, i've got a, a huawei p30 now yeah. so i'm better than you guys yeah because not uh, the light by the way the full <laughs> huawei p30. i have the light <laughs> um gloria i've got some lingerie will you take pictures of me what do you have I've a got. red string? <laughs> a red string thong. A tiger string. You see, Andrew has a lot of experience because he was a cam boy. <laughs> oh. A cam boy? It's not a cam boy. It's called a web cam boy. I actually hired him. Oh, I thought it was a cam boy. I don't know. WCB. Oh, sorry. Wait a WCB. Like oh, Andrew Macia, the WCB. You should write Andrew Macia. WBC. <laughs> No, but Andrew must see a WCB. Yeah. And be confusing. And you go yeah, to a business like, meeting and you're like, that? what is the WCB? Yeah, this is a WCB. Webcam boy. Yeah. That's nice. That's how I supported my way through college. So Which yeah. I didn't go to. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a second. So back to these guys. That, oh, there's two things. I, I, I'll get to the more important question. Forget the guys. Do you think that you or someone, and, or, and do you know folks that are excelling in boudoir photography in Colombia? And would it work? No. In fashion photography, yes. In, would would in, boudoir work? I think so. And people can make a living out of it? People uh, will contact... I don't see why not. Yeah, that women, would be groundbreaking we women, we women, first of all, we're very emotional beings. Yeah. For you us, don't it's say. important. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for us, it's really important. And, I mean, we, especially in Latin, in Latin cultures, we care a lot about how we look. Yep. More than I don't know. Any I would just say Latin, Latin country. men too, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very so. So I don't see why not. Plus, we're super like when we're in love, we're like all yeah, the way, yeah. like yeah, crazy yeah. in love, exactly. Crazy in love. So That's so it means it. Yeah. it means I won't spare a penny just to get the best photographer to make me the best photos for my boyfriend. Assuming that they have the money, yeah. Wow. Well, maybe we could just close down shop here and become make this a boudoir, right? Yeah, here. a little boudoir room, a, little, a booty boudoir. Mm -hmm. But booty I, think you need, I, need, I think you need like good lighting and stuff yeah. like that. 
Shit, I'd, I'd like I to should be a natural boudoir light. photographer. Uh, I mean, I mean well, I, I flick I, you like this. I didn't mean to <laughs> flick you so hard, but I was thinking, girl, let's talk some real shit. Uh, so who are you dating? How's the dating life? How's how's it like dating an old, a little Parisian Parisian? Wait, are you dating man? someone in France? No. Were you dating someone in France? Have you dated a Parisian? I have, I have, I have, I have. How how is that different than dating a Colombian or Venezuelan? I guess a Latino. Mm. Was he Latino? I think I think the differences between Europeans in general and Latins is that Latins are more. In general, and I'm talking about women and men at the same time. Mm -hmm. We are more possessive. Okay. We, we, it's, it's crazy. It's like the control, like, okay, we're a couple. We need to do everything together. Yeah. No, oh, I hate 24 that. 7. 24 7. We need yeah. to be together. And uh, where are you going? And why? And why didn't you invite me? And uh, why are you going alone with your friends? And Is that why he what broke do up you with mean? you? What do you mean you're going on a trip alone? And I was like, and I'm quite the opposite. I'm like, Oh, you do thought. your life. I do mine, and great, we're together. But so we are individuals. But okay? you're an anomaly of yeah, a of a, of a Latin am, woman am, am, because yeah, most of the girls that I've dated here are kind of like what you were talking about. Yes, exactly. Like, oh, you didn't invite me. Are we broken up now? Yeah. No, I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just in the bathroom, baby. Like, calm down. It's been you fun. You didn't invite me to the bathroom. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm me going to... nada. You didn't yeah. tell me anything. Okay, yeah. gotta tell you everything every step of the way. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, we obviously we 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 a lot of times we talk about dating mm -hmm. here because it's it's people who haven't been out of here and been to Europe. Um, like the women there might have this fantasy in their head from a few little French movies they saw of the French blonde guy rest, kissing them by the Eiffel Tower and it's all this romance with violin music playing in the background where in reality, they could get that here m m faster at the Coltejer building with a Colombian man uh, yeah. who will actually do that versus going to, to Paris and expecting yeah. him to be all that affectionate and worried yeah, about yeah. you. And yeah, also the affection thing. Like... We cannot generalize, like it's yeah, impossible. There exactly. are there are certain characters, you know, among people and there's nothing you can do yeah. about that. But generally speaking, we do touch more. We are more affectionate. We express more our feelings through, you know, through, through yeah, the body. Yeah, yeah, through the body. So does that mean that French people actually don't French kiss as much as Colombians? Uh, no, they, they do, they do, they do. Like, like I do tell you, it just, it just sometimes... Like there's so many people in the world that you know some of them are you know incredibly affection yeah. affectionate some of them are incredibly cold that depends a lot on the personality not really on the nationality uh, but generally speaking in Latin America we touch more but, but did I rule. just hear Andrew say he would French kiss the booty no do they French kiss the booty oh, okay I heard I heard see sometimes my hearing is going it's got to be this affluenza or whatever I got. Um, yeah. What, what's wrong with you anyway? I know. I just feel like, you know, like, you know, when you get half a flu, but you don't have a cold, you just feel like the body aches coming from the By joints. By the way, Joel gets sick in Medellin. I don't know how that happens. I think a lot it's, of people get sick in Oh, Medellin. but you travel a lot. Well, to his defense, he travels a lot. He literally will be in Bogota like one weekend because he's a photographer and he shoots for major clients here that, that fly him out to go shoot. So he'll be like a weekend in Bogota, which is like cold ass weather. And then he'll be like in La Guajira, which is hot ass weather or like Barranca Bermeja. I think I think I think it's the I think it's the airplanes. Oh, I think it's like the airplanes. Oh, the it's like you're in a, space. Yeah, airplanes and like people are touching everything and you're moving around. Oh, yeah, and like for sure. For me, I don't know. I, I, I wish if like right now, uh, Andrew and I are on this whole like no sugar, no carb thing. No so sex. No sex. Um, I've never had that. I should move to Paris. Maybe I'll have better luck. That's just my uh, life. That's your gift. It's not even like my. It's not even a goal this year or, or anything. It's just I've been without sex for for a while now. Why don't we just drop all this and become monks? We could become monks or go French. To, go to Paris. Go or to French. Paris and become yeah. French monks. French monks. The the, the the French monks instead of chick monks would be French monks. Oh my goodness! Oh, these boys lost his mind. You know. But anyways, um, so I just lost my train of thought, and I like that one when I lose my train of thought. But yeah, so if Another Colombian person, you know, um, hopefully they have, whether they do or don't have the support of their parents. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to go live in France or live in Europe or live wherever else. They want to get out of here. Let's mm -hmm. just say, mm -hmm. let's call the person middle, 
middle class and lower because I think yeah. people with money can do whatever the hell they want. Mm-hmm. What what would your advice as Gloria be to them from everything you've learned? Well, first of all, start saving. Okay. So you got some money to land on and to live it. Save for your a money while. because one day it'll save you. Exactly. Right. So start mm-hmm. saving so you have, you know, enough money to live for a while. Uh, secondly, look for you know scholarships or apply for jobs and stuff like that because right now the world is huge it's not like it was 20 years ago when everything was local and it was so difficult now everyone you know the frontiers are opening and opportunities are opening everywhere i got a friend of mine who who was uh he didn't have a job here and he wanted to be a scuba diver, diver instructor. He was an engineer and he uh, wrote to a scuba diving uh, school in Mexico and said, I want to be a scuba diver instructor. So I will change work for, uh, for your training and then for uh, the certificate. Mm-hmm. And they said, come tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Like, all right. So he went there, no money. Yeah. They, he, but he had somewhere to live and food. Yeah. And he and that's how he became a scuba diver instructor. Now he's living in the Maldives. Wow. In an amazing Portugal, right? What? No, that's Azores. No, the that's, Maldives that's are, are and th- those amazing islands in the water. in the uh, no. Asia. No. no, 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 it's in Asia. Okay, the Maldives. Okay. Yeah, it's a uh, I know they're beautiful though. I see photos you, you of You know, all have time. you seen those islands that look like a palm tree? Yeah, yeah. From yeah. from the sky? Mm-hmm. Well, though, those there. Ones. That's where he's living. Yeah, yeah. And he used Asia. to be an engineer here unemployed. How long ago was that? Three years ago. Three years Three, ago, four, and he's yeah. li- he's a dive instructor Three. in the Maldives. Yeah. So you're so what I so what I With gather no what no I'm money. gathering is you're saying, go do it. Yeah. Or what's your what? Just yeah, yeah. just get get like, to have it. Have a plan. I mean, I'm not saying go and starve and ask you know money on the street. Have a plan. Yeah. You know, figure it out. But there is definitely a possibility. Yeah. You can do it. That's so funny. That's how I ended up in uh, Mexico also. I wrote to a tour company and I ended up guiding tours in the jungle. I left my well-paying research job to go yeah. uh, guide tours and make uh, pretty shit money. But um, I could have continued on if I wanted to. But and it's, how, it's just, be- how much wa- well off are you now? Like, I, th- I think great. It, it got think, you yeah. to a path. In, and from that path, it just everything started opening. Yeah. And you started you know, going your own way. Yeah. And Joel, what would your advice be to someone... Uh, that's middle to lower class in Colombia that wants to get out of Colombia and experience something. Uh, well, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with what uh, Gloria said because, in retrospect, now nine years after uh, eight nine years after leaving Canada, my mistake was just saving money and spending it like it was nothing and not having a plan. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, and I think like cash flow, whether it's in business, whether you're traveling, cash flow is really important. Mm-hmm. Now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say if you don't have the parents or whatever, either do that, start emailing companies in advance if you want to go work. You know you don't have a, a marketable skill. Or hit up, there's a lot of online forums. There's the Upworks, Fiverr, if you're a graphic artist, if you're a translator, if you're whatever. There are places where you can make your five and ten dollar jobs. And all you need literally is that five or ten, that one job. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. get and, mm-hmm. and that's not the limit five, ten, fifty, a hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. And that one job could pay you for like a, in a lot of places to travel and stuff a month, obviously not like like Paris. Um, but I, I definitely think income and, and understanding how you'll make money don't just say it'll happen, you, it doesn't happen. It doesn't you happen. go, you, you spend all your money, trust me, yeah, I did yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you got to re- make the real moves. For me, I had to get down to the point of no money to like making the real. Um, bigger moves and then the second thing is we talked about it I think on the last episode Andrew is literally Nike hit the nail on the head just do it get out version I talk about it today with people also down in in Ihamia get out version 1.0 and two more things first believe it's possible yeah because everything's on the mind mindset is everything and second don't let the fear rule you yeah like there is a phrase that says, if you have fear, do it with fear. I like that. Right. And yeah. you? Uh, it's kind of what she was saying. Uh, it's all a mindset. So I remember when I was broke and I remember when uh, being in a jail cell for, for a long time. Uh, and that wasn't even my rock bottom, by the way. My <laughs> rock bottom was living on the street, having zero money, trying to do something. 
living out of a car, but I never changed this thought in my brain. And I still say it to this day. One day I will be king. Literally, that's something I've never shared with anybody, actually. This is the first time I actually say, saying it publicly is that every day I wake up and I say I will be king, meaning that today is an amazing day and it's and I'm going to do something awesome, whether it's make my fucking bed, whether it's help my brother do something, whether it's help my sister do something, whether it's help my friend do something, whether it's me go shoot some baskets. Um, but it's never to be negative. It's always to be positive. Absolutely. So I've never, it's, it's easy when you are broke and you have no money to be negative. It's very easy mm -hmm. and you'll have a lot of friends to help you be negative. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's actually very difficult to wake up, smile and tell yourself in the mirror that you love yourself. I know because it took me years to be able to do that. Um, so if my, my advice to someone that wants to get out of Colombia or anywhere in the world that they're listening to this podcast and like, I, I've got no money, I've got no family to help me, I've got no prospects. You've got to stop, start with yourself. Mm -hmm. Wake up in the morning, Absolutely. look at yourself and say, I will be king and I love you. Uh, trust me that it'll change your mindset for the rest of the day. It'll change the mindset for the rest of the week, which will lead to the rest of the month, which will lead to a better year. So uh, I guess closing thoughts and statements for, for Gloria, Thank you for being on. Um, I think I've learned a lot about you. I didn't even know about you before. And I have so much more respect. Not that I didn't before, but I mean, it's like a newfound respect for what you've done. Um, and your hustle and endurance. And yeah, your hustle, your endurance. I'm going to miss you at Carnival. Um, I guess we have to touch a little bit on Carnival before we leave. Mm -hmm. Carnival is in February. We will be there. The 21st to the 25th. The 21st to the 25th. If you guys want to go to Carnival... And this is uh, aired. Hit us up. We've got a whole palco, but the whole palco palco means that we have a whole grandstand, which is like 60 people. But we've got 54 spots. By the time this airs, it'll probably be all sold out. Yeah. But, but we can tell you how to get your own. Yeah, we can. We can. Way. Yeah. And we probably meet up for parties out there. Yeah. Um, anything else you guys? I, got, share? I, have, I have something that honestly I was thinking about. I, I went on a pee break and I thought something that we've never asked somebody. And I'd actually really like to ask. You may have seen the one episode with Kyle and them. You may have watched a preview or two. I don't know if you've watched more than one, but Kyle from Nathan, what you Nathan. from what you know about this podcast and where we're going and now being on, what do you think people out there, whether it's Colombians in France, Colombians in the U.S., uh, foreigners coming here, what do you think they want to see more of on this podcast? What would you do differently or better? Because I know you're as competitive as we are. So what would you do? Were it yours? Well. No, I think you're doing pretty well. Like, the thing is, uh, you have uh, interviewed people from very different backgrounds. And that is very, very interesting because you're giving a very global um, picture, like, picture uh, mm -hmm. of, of, the, of, of what Medellin is. Uh, but also you're making it very fun and okay. very relaxed and very cool. And, you know, this is... Have you watched other podcasts? Before, like, like, like the ones that are filmed that are that yeah. are shown on YouTube, and do they do anything different? And you're like, wow, I wish if, like, so one of the things we hope to start doing more of is inserting uh, clips of the city, clips of uh, of other folks, uh, photos and stuff, mm. so you don't have to see at least me and Andrew's ugly ass mugs every single time. You've got beautiful people like Gloria gracing the uh, the stage, so you guys can look at her, but that people can be it can be it can be a lot more interactive. That's the one of the things we're, we're hoping yeah. To no, do the, the only future. thing is I think uh, people have uh, not have a lot of uh, attention spans, so yeah. like very short. Uh, so the ideas have to be very active all the time. Yeah. Like when you stay a long time in one idea, people can, can get bored. Exactly. So it has to be fast. Yeah. Cool. It has, it has to, to be, be fast. Hey, yeah. just, just FYI, the, this podcast will air on the 31st of January. So plenty of time before the Carnaval. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Joel, any closing statements, thoughts? I love you, Gloria. I love you too. And I'm so grateful with you too. I've never cried really. on camera. <laughs> And you're never you going to. You really, no, no. really helped me a lot with my business. And I'm super, super grateful. And I'm also super grateful for your friendship. Every single time I come here, it's a delight to see you. Right. Yeah, likewise, likewise. And, you know, we never even thought about it as helping or or actually like as a job. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to help. We're going to do Gloria's site. It was like, 
Oh, she's our sister. We got to do this. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's just a part of uh, who and we I are. I will yeah. definitely always be in depth. Yeah. Thank, thank yeah. you. Well, really, that's really, where those lingerie so pictures of me will come into yeah. Absolutely. Payments. The red string. Get your tiger string. <laughs> <laughs> my tiger, tiger string. string. <laughs> if anybody wants to see Andrew <laughs> in a tiger string uh, thong in boudoir photos looking all seductive with his face, Do let us know. Yeah, if 2,000 2, subscribers, yeah, you'll do it. On YouTube. <laughs> but what about this video? If this two thousand video, ten thousand views. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. That's yes. we'll never get ten thousand views. Yeah, you'll never get to get yeah. to be in a tiger. Yeah, like but I want to be. All right. Okay. One hundred <laughs> views. One hundred and fifty <laughs> no, no. views of this particular podcast, and Andrew what will no? wear. We a, that. Yeah, we average that. It's got to be higher. It's got to be higher. I'm trying to make goals achievable for my boy Andrew over here. And <laughs> All right. Five hundred. Five hundred views. Five hundred views. If this podcast gets to five hundred views. Gloria, upon seeing Andrew the next time, will do a boudoir shoot oh with Andrew in a tiger stripe thong. Okay. Word up. All yeah. Right. All right. All right. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on the 23rd episode of the Medellin Podcast. You guys can find us on Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. You can watch us on YouTube. You could follow us on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you want to. Find us. If you don't find us, make sure you hit us up and let us know so that we can get on that platform. Thank you, Gloria. Thank this you has been much. amazing. Thank you, Joel. Wait, don't before last, 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 ultimate last, as we call it. Tell them how to find you online and how to check out your work All and everything right. you're doing. So I, I have uh, Gloria-Villa.com. Gloria-Villa.com. I have a new website, a very brand new website called MyParisBoudoir.com. Um, how do you spell boudoir? <sighs> I'm terrible at B-O-U-B-O-U-D-O-U-D-O-I-R. Yeah, there you go. All right, just go Boudoir. look up Boudoir. Boudoir. Yeah, yeah. And what um, else? Instagram. Instagram too. Uh, Villa Gloria. Mm -hmm. And then Paris.Boudoir. Okay. All cool. right. Easy peasy. Go find her. Thank you for being on. High five. High five, Joel. High five, Root French style. Don't get too close. Thank you, Don't get too Felipe, close. for another ex excellent podcast. Yeah. See you guys next time. Bye.